Okay. If I could have your attention, please. Hello, my name is David Knott. I'm president of Reason Foundation. And before I do anything else, I want to thank our host and hostess tonight, Carrie and Helen Welsh. <laughs> Carrie and Helen, where did you go? <laughs> Carrie, Helen. They disappeared. They they hiding? Hiding? Carrie and Helen, please. Carrie, Helen. Please. Oh, well. please. Oh. You're being honored. Helen, you fall on stage. We have. Oh. <laughs> well, hello, everyone. <laughs> Prepared speech, so there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Just um, we wish Brian all the best with his book because Ron Paul is going to be a very historic figure in American history, I think. So it's nice to be all with all of you. Thanks for coming out. Um, our, our speaker tonight is Brian Doherty, who's a senior editor at Reason Magazine. Uh, Brian is also the author of now four books. So there is This is Burning Man, which is a definitive history of the Burning Man Festival. There is a book on the Second Amendment and the recent victory for gun rights in America. There is the Radicals for Capitalism, which is the definitive history of the libertarian movement, which if you're a reader and you're interested in liberty, this is the book. It goes back through 40 years and has all of the crazy characters, including people who are in this crowd here tonight. <laughs> and, uh, and then now, uh, this, this Ron Paul Revolution book on the Ron Paul movement, and the implications of that and what it means that there are so many energized people uh, who are really dedicating their lives to Ron Paul. I met Mary, who's with the Ron Paul campaign, is here tonight. Mary's right here. We have Steve Collette running for Congress is with us tonight. Uh, so, and, and of course, you know, everybody else who's the Reason people, um, Reason staff are here, Reason TV, Zach Weissmuller, Ted Balaker, Reason TV producer. I'm not going to get everybody, but thank you all for coming. We got Rick Williams here running for Senate. Yeah. So without further ado, I will have Brian make five or so minutes of remarks. We can take questions from the floor. And then we can continue conversation and enjoy in the view. So thanks all for coming. Thank you. Thank you all very much. Um, I, it's almost a little embarrassing to me that I ended up writing a book about a guy running for president because I've always been a very apolitical libertarian. I have never voted and I never will vote, not even for Ron Paul. Um, but um, as a political historian and particularly with expertise in the libertarian movement, I could not deny what was happening in front of my eyes starting in January 2007 till now, that an actual mass popular movement dedicated to libertarian ideas really was arising, and I didn't think it could happen, and it, it arose because of a guy running for president, and running for president as a Republican, uh, no less. And I had known of and personally known Ron Paul for a long time um, in my huge 700 page history of libertarianism radicals for capitalism I interviewed Ron for it uh, but if you look at that book now which has a 2007 copyright date though it was finished in 2005 uh, you will note that Ron Paul gets only about three pages which seems like a ludicrous uh, misjudgment on my part except at the time it was the proper judgment. Ron Paul was just this weird curiosity. Dr. No, the <laughs> one versus 434, this weird outlier in Congress. We didn't know how he got there. We didn't know how he stayed. We were glad he was there, but he wasn't really making waves. Um, I was, I believe, the first national reporter to interview him in January 2007 when he announced the, the notion that he might run for president. And uh, every step of the way in that process, I have misjudged how much of a splash he would make. He has exceeded my expectations every step of the way, so um, it seemed natural to me that I would want, watching the story unfold around me, would want to uh, dig into it and try to, to write a chronicle, not just of the guy, uh, but of the movement around him, which is the important story moving forward. Ron Paul himself is having his last hurrah on the national stage, uh, but what he did 
in the last four years is going to resonate in America's political future in a very big way and in a very positive way. And I was quite certain that 20 years from now, looking back on American political history, that far more important than Mitt Romney, far more important than John McCain, far more important even than President Barack Obama, we would see how important Ron Paul and the energy that arose around Ron Paul is. Because as a libertarian, I mostly think Ron Paul is mostly right, that the crises of oversized government, both domestically with issues of debt, with issues of living quality, with guys with guns knocking down people's doors over raw milk or medical marijuana, with trillions of dollars being spent and thousands of lives being lost in a, a futile mission to try to manage the entire world as, as a globe-straddling empire, with trillions of dollars of debt being added every year to a 16 trillion existing debt already, uh, that we are in fact seeing that sovereign nations actually can have debt crises. Uh, that's undeniable now. I think what people fall back on in the U.S. as well, other governments may face sovereign debt crises, but we're the U.S. government. Um, I don't have as much faith in that as the people on both sides of the aisle uh, running the government now have. So I do think there is a sense of urgency in having Ron Paulite ideas uh, infect politics, which is why uh, Rick Williams here running for Senate, he actually provides a great scene in my book. Uh, he was one of the most helpful interview subjects for my book, and I think he speaks very well in my book and as a Senate candidate for the seriousness of the crisis we're now facing. So I, I believing that, I would like to believe that uh, Paul's really tremendous real political success from 2008 to 2012. He is still the last man standing in the race against Romney. He has more than doubled both his raw vote total and his percentage in the Republican, uh, Republican primary. And in the end, he'll be doing even better than that. He is going to come in to the Republican convention, not a weird fringe, but as the leader of the loyal opposition within the Republican Party, a libertarian wing that's dedicated to fiscal sanity, that's dedicated to monetary sanity, that's dedicated to foreign policy sanity, that while it did not take over the party this year, is going to prove that it cannot be ignored in the same way that the Goldwater kids in 1960 proved that they cannot be ignored. Ron Paul and the libertarian wing represent a wing that is both growing and necessary for America's political future. So it was a great but fascinating and an honor to get to, to write that story in the midst of it. And um, if you're interested in that story, I hope you'll look at my book. And I'm very glad you all came out here tonight in the Welsh's beautiful home to, to help uh, enjoy it. And thank you all very much.